and how important this race is to his season. This is it. The field coming through turn four. For the final time before they get the green flag. Dale Earnhardt Jr. embarking on what could be a storybook ending to his career at Daytona International Speedway. He starts from the pole. The last time he did it at this track, he ended up in victory lane. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Chase Elliott making up row one. The pace car has made its way to pit row. The field in the hands of Jr. Green flag in the air. We're underway from Daytona. perspective as we see the bat cam going down the back stretch at 100 miles an hour that camera moves from one point to the next Dale Earnhardt Jr. moved up the racetrack Chase Elliott came down fighting for the lead as they come out of four for the first time Dale Jr. got such a great restart that he gave, had so much gap between he and the second row that when they ran him down they ran him down at such a rate that he could not block Chase Elliott Chase Elliott leads lap one Bottom of the racetrack now. Chase Elliott, Dale Earnhardt Jr., one and two. Brad Keselowski in the two, running third. Casey Kane, fourth on the outside, leading that outside line. There's the blocking we were anticipating. Chase Elliott all the way up the racetrack, trying to keep that 88 behind him. Two by two all the way back. And now three wide racing as they come through the trioval. Speed here at Daytona is just unbelievable. 200 mile per hour averages tighten it in this pack. You see some cars sparking from time to time. Very normal, very expected a low air pressure at the start of these runs. Down the back stretch they go again. Chase Elliott moves all the way up the racetrack. That's where Dale Earnhardt Jr. was trying to move to get some momentum, maybe get in front of teammate Casey Kane to try to pass teammate Chase Elliott. Hendrick Motorsports well represented at the front of this field. Brad Keselowski in the two. The third car back on the inside. Jimmy Johnson in the 48s. Still mid-pack, closer to the front than the back. Well, and that's the struggle, Rick. That's the struggle the drivers have been talking about, about track position. You see Jimmy Johnson has a decent race car, but he's in the middle three wide. There's really nowhere to go. The track is clogged in front of him. He just has to be patient, wait for the door to open up as Dale Jr. gets shuffled out of line. Brad Keselowski takes advantage of Dale Jr. coming down the racetrack, and now Dale Jr. on the inside. They try to get the inside line moving, but Keselowski's taken second away, and here comes Kevin Harvick in the four. Helps coming, though, to Jr., 21, pulled right up behind him. At the same time, the leaders tried to block. That helped Dale Jr. as well, gave him a little bit of sniff of that draft, so that's going to help pull Jr. back to the front. Chase Elliott goes low once again, opens the door for the two. Here comes Brad Keselowski. He's going to move on the high side, trying to take the lead away from Chase. Staying right up against the wall. Brad Keselowski surging in front of this pack. And now Keselowski will try to block to stay up front. He brought Harvick along with him. Now it's all about information. These front two cars, the two of Brad Keselowski on board here with Kevin Harvick. They're trying to control their car out front. Continue to look in the mirror, listening to their spotter, trying to figure out what lane to block, where the momentum, where the runs are coming from. Kozlowski out in front now. Kevin Harvick just behind him. Let's listen in on the spotter communication of the two team. Bike two. Bike two. Tight behind him. Bottom lane is going to get a lot of stored energy here. 
88 solid on the 24, going to come forward to 84. The four is going to air push you. Your pump is one to you, and the pump is one behind Harvick. Chase is clear, two wide behind him. Four, 24, single file, and two wide. High lane, four back. Hill Jr. is all over the 24. That'll be a big energy out back on the bottom. Bottom eight, energy, Harvick went up top for the... And that was spotter coverage presented by Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping drivers worry less. We heard Jeff Boyd there, or Joey Meyer, excuse me, the spotter for Brad Keselowski, giving him the information behind him, but Brad Keselowski still looking in his mirror to watch which line he has to get in front of. Boy, and Rick, when you mean behind him, Jeff, he didn't mean one car behind him. He was talking about the 24 and the 88, who were three and four cars behind him. And Steve, it was amazing to listen to Joey Meyer, Brad Kozlowski's spotter. He was doing all that while Brad was in the lead. You would think nothing's going on while you're in the lead. You can just hang out. That's not the case, is it, Jeff? He wants as much information as he can. Where's the energy coming from behind me? That's as key as anything in a plate race. That's right. That energy is the run. A guy pushing another guy, getting that run with the leader. You can't see that develop. You only see it after it's happened, and then it's too late to block. Chase Energy fakes low, and Chase Elliott goes for the lead on the high side.